The story that I'm going to read to you today is called The Mitten by Alvin Tresselt and illustrated by Yaro Slava. This is going to be an interesting little book and I hope you ha will enjoy it. It was the coldest day of winter and a little boy was trudging through the forest gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, said his grandmother, as she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold, and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. There he is, gathering wood with his sleigh. All morning the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now how a boy could do this on the coldest day of winter, I'll never know, but that's the way my grandfather tells the story. Off he went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying on the snow drift. So it's going to stay laying there. As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and when she spied the little boy's mitten with its feathery fur cup, she popped right in to get warm. It was just the right size for a tiny mouse. How about that? There she is. Do you see her over there? There she is, over here, getting into the mitten. Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping over the snow. Anybody home, she asked when she saw the mitten. Only me, said the mouse, and come in quickly before you freeze. So look at her. She, the mouse is in there, and here's the frog coming to see, hollering to her and asking if anybody was there. They had no sooner settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining when the owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten, he asked. If you mind your manners, replied the mouse, for owls always made her nervous. And don't wiggle around too much, said the frog, because it's a bit tight in here. There she is, and here comes the owl down to the mitten. It wasn't long before Rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room for me in that nice warm mitten, asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space left, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. But come in, we'll see what we can do. So the rabbit is going to try to get in. There they all are. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten, and after a good deal of trouble, she got herself in along with the others. The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous, but with a bitter wind outside, that el what else could she do? So there they are, all in there. And now, as if things weren't bad enough, a next visitor was a big gray wolf big gray wolf. How could he get in there? Who wanted to come in too? I don't know how we'll manage, said the mouse, but we'll try. Looks like the mouse is coming clear out of the mitten and not even in the mitten. Everyone moved around a bit and finally the wolf was squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get out of the wind. Oh, dear, cried the mouse, for the mitten was already beginning to stretch a little. We just don't have any more room. See all of them in there? I'll be very careful, said the boar. Wish that with that he squinched himself into the mitten along with the mouse, the frog, the owl, the rabbit, the fox, and the wolf. I know this is so because my grandfather told me. His grandfather 
told him all about the mitten. But the worst was yet to come, for who would, should appear now but a bear? He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals, even before the bear, bear had a chance to even speak. They didn't want any more but anybody else into that mitten. Anyone else they didn't want. Look at the one little peeking out there. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or thank you, he began crawling into the mount mitten. He put his paw in first, and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in, and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath and pushed himself in. Now, while all this was going on, along came a little black cricket. She was very old, and her creaky legs ached with the cold. And when she saw the mitten, she said to herself, Now that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over and see if I can squeeze in, too. So she's going to squeeze in besides the bear. Oh, me, that's all that was needed to finish off the poor old mitten. The cricket had no more than put her first scratchy foot inside when a rip and a snap. The stitches came apart and the old leather cracked and the soft red lining split in half, popping all the animals into the snow. Well, at this very moment, the little boy discovered that he had only one mitten. So back he went to see where he might have dropped the other one but all he could find was the ripped apart pieces, and he thought he saw a little mouse scurrying away with a bit of red wool perched on her head. See, there he was. she was up here. Look at that. It looked very much like the lining of the thumb of his missing mitten. Oh, well, said the boy as he snuggled his cold hand into his coat. My grandmother will surely have my new mittens finished by now. Then he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks. And my grandfather says he never did know what really happened to his mitten. So he was the one that had lost the mitten, helping the, his grandmother. How about that? That was a neat story. And thank you so much for listening. You have a wonderful day and God bless.